Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Beautiful weather for Easter Sunday. Very warm, mostly sunny to partly cloudy with highs in the 80s. 83 for the high in Raleigh today, 83 in Durham, and 85 for the high temperature in Fayetteville. The normal is 68, so we're way above that. The record in Raleigh today, 88, so not likely to break a record, but it is definitely plenty warm. We do have a cold front over Virginia. Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Keely Arthur. Tonight, a two-year-old Robinson County boy is safe after authorities issued an Amber Alert for him this morning. And a Robinson County man now faces charges that include kidnapping. WRL's Megan Glover is in WRL's Live Center with a closer look at what happened. Megan? Yeah, Keely, here was the boy at the center of that Amber Alert. Two-year-old Tacoma Keegan Hunt. Now, like you said, he has been found safe. Good news there. But before that, he was last seen in a Jeep Cherokee Latitude on Creek Run Drive in Maxton. Authorities believe he was with 36-year-old Earl Locklear at the time, and they now confirm that Locklear was caught after a short foot pursuit. His charges include kidnapping, larceny of a motor vehicle, abduction of children, felonious restraint, and resisting an officer. He's in jail without bond and will be in court tomorrow. We should also mention that they confirmed he does have a connection to the boy and his family. Now, I also want to show you this video posted earlier today on Facebook by a relative showing the boy in the car with the caption, he is safe. We'll share any updates on WREL.com, but again, we are pushing for answers, including the exact relation between Locklear and that boy, and just really any more surrounding details. Back to you. So great seeing that video. Megan Glova in the WREL Live Center. Thanks, Megan. Well, there were two earthquakes overnight in western North Carolina just minutes apart. The U.S. Geological Survey says there were two earthquakes in Low Gap. That's a community in Surrey County. The first earthquake happened last night around 10 minutes before midnight. The second happened overnight at 12.22 a.m. The first earthquake had a magnitude of 2.3, the second one 1.5. Both were very weak, so it's unlikely that many people even felt them. Police have arrested two people in connection with a fire in Davidson County that killed a fire captain. The fire happened Monday on West 5th Street in Lexington. Fire Captain Ronnie Metcalf responded and suffered severe burns on 60% of his body. He died Friday. Today, detectives arrested 31-year-old Brandon Hoskins and 37-year-old Stacy Stiegel. They each face a charge of misdemeanor breaking and entering into the house that burned. They also face drug charges and are currently in jail without bond. I-40 eastbound near Highway 70 is back open after a crash this afternoon. Our breaking news tracker saw crews clearing away the damaged cars. Three lanes were closed while they worked. The road reopened after almost an hour. Where we have reached out to State Highway Patrol about exactly what happened and who was involved. Two separate crashes just a few miles down I-40 caused major backups late last night. WREL crews on scene near the Clayton Bypass around midnight last night saw one crash involving several cars, including one that was flipped over. You can see it right there. A car caught on fire in a separate crash in that same area. Several agencies were on I-40 until early this morning. We have reached out to learn more about the conditions of the people involved in those crashes, but have not heard back at this time. The NC State women's basketball team advances to the Final Four for the only second time in the program's history. The number three seed pack beat the top seeded Texas Longhorns in Portland 76 to 66. Isaiah James scored 27 points for NC State and hit seven three pointers in the game, including five in the first half. The Wolfpack will now play undefeated number one overall seed South Carolina in the Final Four on Friday in Cleveland, Ohio. St. Augustine's University goes virtual tomorrow. This move comes after an accreditation battle and significant financial struggles for the school. WRL's Carly Haynes shares how the board is reacting amid the changes. Monday marks day one of remote learning for St. Augustine's. Students have to pack their bags and go home by Wednesday. 
The school is currently at risk of losing its accreditation due to financial issues. It's in a hefty amount of debt. And in February, WRL News reported that the IRS filed a $7.9 million tax lien on the school for unpaid taxes dating back to 2020. Alum and support groups filed a petition demanding the current board of trustees resign. As of today, it has amassed 1,700 signatures. The chairman of the board of trustees has previously said the board does not plan to disband. He issued a statement just over a week ago that reads in part, the board remains focused on preserving SAU's accreditation and stabilizing the university's finances under its new leadership. The school did remote learning back in January for two weeks so it could make campus repairs. Carly Haynes, WRL News, Raleigh. A North Carolina wilderness camp had its license revoked nearly two months after a 12 year old boy died in its care. Trails Carolina is operated in Transylvania County at Lake Toxaway. The camp was advertised as wilderness therapy programs for kids and teens ages 10 to 17. The program's website says it's dedicated to helping teens with quote behavioral or emotional difficulties. The State Department of Health and Human Services found that Trails Carolina violated licensing rules for mental health, developmental disabilities and substance abuse services. The department said those violations put all campers at risk. Trails Carolina says it will work with the state health department to get its license reinstated. The City of Durham Transportation Department is presenting its annual report to county commissioners tomorrow. The report for the 2023 fiscal year focuses on fare free transit, electrical buses, ridership trends and safety. Go Durham has the second highest ridership in the state after Charlotte. It had over 5 million passenger trips in the last fiscal year. The report presentation is happening at the Durham County Board of Commissioners work session. That meeting starts at 9 a.m. Well, if you plan to be out this Easter Sunday evening, you are in luck. It is beautiful outside. Meteorologist Anthony Baglione has a quick look at our hour by hour forecast. It has been just such a nice day for us, Keely. We've seen a lot of sunshine, warm temperatures too. Our record for a place like Raleigh, for instance, is 88. We hit 85 for us, so definitely warm. I think very, probably a very busy place too. Our Lake Aston camera, lots of sunshine on that shot. I do want to show you though one area where we're seeing at least a little bit of light rainfall that's popped up. We talked about this yesterday that this was at least a potential, and there's a couple areas of some light to moderate rain just south and east of Roanoke Rapids that is quickly pushing out of our viewing area and then we should be dry into tonight. It has dropped temperatures though for South Hill at 66 currently 83 is where we sit in Raleigh and Fayetteville, Southern Pines, Durham 81 in Roxborough. It is going to be a pretty warm at night tonight. No weather related problems though here as you head into tonight. If you're celebrating just enjoying your Easter Sunday upper 60s there by the time we get to 10 o'clock and then Keeley 62 into tomorrow morning. We're going to talk though about our next system that could bring a chance of some strong to severe storms here in just a little bit. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony. Well, a stretch of Blunt Street will be closed in Raleigh starting tomorrow. The area from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Hoag Street will be shut down for crews to work at a capital improvement project. The roadway is expected to be closed through the entire month of April. Another Powerball drawing with no winner for that big grand prize. That pushes the jackpot even closer it's to one to billion dollars. It's estimated now at $975 million. The cash value. 472 million. This is now the fifth largest Powerball drawing and the 11th largest jackpot in the U.S. coming just after the $1 billion Mega Millions jackpot, which was won last week. You can watch the next Powerball drawing live tomorrow night at 11 only on WRAL. Well, Dick's Park is undergoing some changes ahead of next week. We're going to get a look at the work underway for Dreamville and share what else you can do in Raleigh during the music festival. Plus, people around the triangle are celebrating the Easter holiday. The sights and sounds of a sunrise service next. Welcome back. If you've passed by Dix Park, you've probably noticed some big changes happening for the park grounds. That's because Dreamville Festival Week is here and several events are planned leading up to the big weekend. WRL's Laura Levine explains some of the preparation underway as tens of thousands of people get ready to descend upon Raleigh. 
While many people are spending their Easter Sunday with their families, crews are hard at work transforming Dix Park, setting the stage for Dreamville 2024. Fenced off areas, tall beams and trucks moving in and out. It's crunch time for the city preparing for its biggest festival of the year. Having J. Cole like hometown North Carolinian, it really feels like putting North Carolina on the map. NC State students like Carmen Rice are excited to learn the crews are at work. Rice tells me the energy on campus right now is electric. Honestly, like pure joy, like paired with like, obviously we're having an amazing basketball season right now. I think we're just bouncing back and forth between like basketball, Dreamville, basketball, Dreamville. And these music lovers aren't the only ones thrilled to see Dreamville back in action. Local businesses are too. Having like, again, the city be so walkable, like they can just pop over down Hillsborough Street if you need a coffee. Uh, I know Coco Bongo is a really great place to eat. One of the unique things about Dreamville is the economic impact. You know, we'll get flux of people from all over the world that want to be in Raleigh, and we have an opportunity for our vendors to, to take advantage of that. More than 100,000 people attended last year's event. I caught up with Grady Bussey with the city of Raleigh in Moore Square. This is where the city's Big Ideas series is hosting its City Vibes event Friday, hoping to show visitors what else Raleigh has to offer. We actually have leaders that are very serious about listening to the public and what they want. And the public has wanted arts and entertainment and they want the, the ambiance that, that downtown Raleigh brings. And so being partnered with uh, the Raleigh Downtown Alliance is giving us the ability. The ability to highlight local talent and support small businesses while all eyes are on the city of Oaks. We always look at what is the greatest impact and how do we showcase Raleigh in its highest fashion. And so Dreamville bringing thousands of thousands of people to Raleigh, it became a no brainer. If you're heading to Dix Park this week, just be mindful. Some areas are going to be restricted and the park will officially close to the public later this week. Laura Levine, WRL News in Raleigh. Well, it's Easter Sunday with services scheduled throughout the day for worshipers to recognize the holiday. As the sun came up this morning, people gathered for a service in Raleigh's historic Oakwood Cemetery. The band began playing at first light. That was around 6.50 a.m. This was one of the many services scheduled throughout the day. And Anthony, you promised us yesterday that it was going to be a beautiful Easter Sunday, and you absolutely delivered on that promise. <laughs> I try, yes. It was really nice out there. I went for a walk earlier and, and actually checked out the Azalea Gardens here out back at Keeley uh, at WRAL. Lots of people out there. Just a really nice sun filled afternoon where we sit right now, though. Check out temperatures in the 80s for most of us. We hit 85 this afternoon, so we're at the 83 currently 83 in Durham as well. You see that 66 though in South Hill. There was a little bit of a light area of some rainfall. And I'm going to show you where that's at currently here in just a second. But if you're planning for this evening, most of us should have no weather related problems. Firing up the grill, just heading out still to enjoy your evening. 75 there at 8 o'clock. We're at 69 there at 10 at 67 by the time we get close to midnight. Our normal high temperature for this time of the year is 68 and we're going to be at that here by about 10 o'clock tonight. So just very, very warm temperatures. We did see this light batch of rainfall push through. If you're watching us yesterday for our six o'clock show, we mentioned that that was a possibility and sure enough, that's exactly what lined up. It stayed mostly here for our northeastern counties, kind of pushed its way through, had some lightning. It was a decently potent cell. We're not expecting any severe weather and most of this is winding down, but it's sitting right around Scotland neck, getting to push, getting ready to push there south and east out of our viewing area. Other than that, we should be quiet here as we head into tonight. I think we're not expecting any more rainfall tomorrow, though, and into our Tuesday. We're going to talk about the chance, at least for a few spotty storms. Here's a look at that severe risk today. We technically are outlined for our far northern areas. Again, Mecklenburg County in that level one out of five. Now that that storm has pushed through, I do think they're probably going to drop that here shortly. I don't expect any more severe potential for our far northern counties. Everyone else can rest easy. It's going to be a nice calm night for us, just pretty warm. We head into our Monday. There's actually a pretty big area outlined there in the central parts of the country, a level three out of five risk. What we're seeing though here into our neck of the woods as we get into Monday, there's also very similar to today that outlined area there, level one out of five north of the triangle for a few strong to severe storms. It's this same stationary front that's just sitting there. It's not going to move much here the next couple of days, and it's just going to be a little bit pesky for us tomorrow. We talk about though where we head into tonight. Here's future cast. 
west is pushing that rainfall on out of here. Notice it's a nice quiet forecast as we get beyond that. Most areas looking nice and dry, just a few clouds through our Monday. We should start off here, I think, with a lot of cloud cover, so it's not going to be quite as sunny as what we're seeing out there right now. It'll be nice and dry, though, for us to start. We go through the day. Notice there's three o'clock in the afternoon, and even as we get closer to six, very similar to what we've seen here the past couple of hours, there could be a few spotty storms pushing through, let's say between about three o'clock and maybe about seven o'clock tomorrow evening. Some of those could have some gusty winds and some very small hail. We are not expecting a tornado threat, and most areas will be dry, but just make sure if you see that tomorrow, it could be a little bit inconvenient. Another day, though, 85 degrees for us in Raleigh, 82 in Roxborough, 87 in Fayetteville to start the week. So we we are very similar temperature wise into both tomorrow and as we head into Tuesday. We're at 86 Tuesday afternoon around the triangle. Spotty storms the next couple days. Our best chances, though, Keely, come in as we head into Wednesday and then a cooler forecast in the 50s here through the rest of this week. Much cooler. I'm getting used to the 80s. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a shock, I think, but, uh, you know, it's North Carolina spring, I guess. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Well, coming up ahead in sports, highlight and reaction after that tremendous upset that sends the NC State women to the final four. Why not us for the first time since 1998 and just the second time in program history, NC State women headed to the final four after knocking off number one seed, Texas 76-66. Well, from unranked to start the season to a trip to the final four in Cleveland, what a journey it has been for this pack team. But today didn't start without maybe a little controversy before tip off. Both teams were notified pregame that the three point line was actually different distances. Yeah, only in the women's game. Well, the court and the programs decided to move forward with the contest, but I'm going to tell you right now, it didn't affect one young lady. Let's get you out to Portland. We go for the action. Now, the Longhorns, one of the best defensive teams in the entire nation, but the pack breaking through early. Zoe Brooks kicks it out to Isaiah James right on the money. She had 10 in the first quarter. States had 16 fast break points. Zania Rivers, the coast-to-coast -coast queen, the tough finish, and one. James could not miss in the first half, Isaiah James, five for five from downtown. Pack out on a 17-2 run. They were up 12 at the break. Now, Texas's Madison Booker, one of the best freshmen in the entire nation. The mid-range to get the Longhorns back within single digits. But right back the other way, Mimi Collins waiting on the wing. Spots up the three. You can count it. That halts a 7-0 run. Tight game, though, down the stretch. That's when you feed River Baldwin down low. 16 second half points. But then I belong to Isaiah James. Career high, seven three-pointers, 27 points. The pack dancing to Cleveland to face the number one overall seed, South Carolina in the final four. But hey, you know what? They're gonna celebrate this one first. Well, I'm just so proud of these young ladies. Again, we, uh, you know, it's a long season. We had a little stretch. February, we lost a couple of road games and uh, I think everybody thought we were gonna fall apart or whatever. And, uh, these players just uh, kept working, uh, stuck together. I mean, they're such a, the chemistry's so good. They really, you know, pull for each other. Well, last night, number 14, North Carolina clinched its first series win in Winston-Salem since 2013. Look at a sweep. Number 12, Wake Forest. Let's get you out to the couch where it's been a heavyweight battle between these two this weekend. Top of four, heels down 2-1, runners at the corner. We got a double steal alert. Vance Honeycutt steals home. He slides in under the tag. That's going to tie the game. He has a near perfect stolen base percentage this season. Now, this one went back and forth. Pick it up bottom of eighth, the Demon Deacons. Plate three, tying this game up at 10 apiece. That was going to set up for a pretty good finish. Top of nine, two on for Logan Stevenson. Skies it high. You can kiss it goodbye. The three run shot puts the heels up for good. 14 10 the final. Heels 25 and four. 10 and two in ACC play. The best start since 2013. The Harbor Park Durham Bulls wrapping its opening weekend series. Junior Camonero, the Tampa Bay Rays' number one prospect to straightaway center. 400 foot blast. That would spark a big day at the plate for the Bulls. Top of five, up 10 nothing. Ruben Cardenas, he's going to laser one deep to right center. His second of the day, Durham racks up 19 hits, 17 5, the final. Let's take a look. At the halftime score of Duke and NC State men, this one is 33-27. We'll have full highlights and reaction coming up later tonight. Keely? 
All right, yeah, that's a big game. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.